The Blend is back with a brand new look, here to get you caught up to speed on everything Ubisoft community. I'm Zach, part of the Ubisoft community team, and before we get to our very first edition of 5 Minutes With, I wanted to share with you some of your work. This is Community Creation. We're going to start up with some gorgeous fan art, which we actually showed a snippet of on the last episode. However, Ubisoft star player Red Opasta deserves a little more time to shine here. Check out this gorgeous speed painting of the wrench, which was actually more recently followed up with this green tinted beauty. Now here's one of the first wrench cosplays we've seen, Tasuki Girl cosplay, no stranger to Ubisoft, and we spotted this one actually on the Watch Dogs Twitter page as part of an exchange with Ak Draymond, who we see here as Marcus Holloway. While you may be digging into Season 3 of Rainbow Six Siege, it is possible that you didn't see this P90 Gator skin or realize that it was designed by a fan. You can find out more about how 8-bit Zoe's work got some love from the dev team on Rainbow6.com. Moving on to the fine work of Deadbird, this guy is incredible. Here's a series of illustrations he did for Rainbow Six Siege, featuring Sledge doing his favorite thing, swinging the big stick. Ash and Glaz, who's clearly the guy you want to sit next to at a dinner party. Uh, here's a more recent piece by Deadbird as we shift to the division, his beautiful rendition of this intimidating beast from the upcoming expansion, Survival, uh, finally on display. And you'll definitely want to check out more of Deadbird's work on Twitter. Sticking with the division but changing art forms, here's some cosplay from Alpha who went all out. The watch, the armbands, the hat, flares. Ah! <laughs> My personal favorite edition though, the Dark Zone loot. We can only hope that Alpha extracted his gear safely. And my goodness, check out these wallpapers created by Raito Akahenareru. These are captured in-game using the cruise photo mode, and well, the pictures speak for themselves. Raito's Flickr page has a whole bunch of glamour shots, you don't want to miss those. Uh, for more community happenings with the crew, by the way, check out their weekly newsletter on thecrewgame.com. Obviously tons of beautiful work in there, thumbs up to everyone whose work was featured. If you want to be featured on The Blend, uh, send us an email, theblend at ubisoft.com or hit us up on Twitter at theblendubi. Now, time for our very first edition of 5 Minutes With, our chance to pick the brain of someone we love here at Ubisoft and we kick off with one of my very favorite people, creative director here at Ubisoft Toronto, Maxime Bellon, who's been creative director on Rainbow Six Vegas, uh, Splinter Cell Conviction, Splinter Cell Blacklist, as well as the Toronto Port portions of Far Cry 4 and Far Cry Primal. We went for a little walk, here's our talk. Max, I'm honored to have you as guest number one on 5 Minutes With. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Are you good to go? I'm good to go. If you could prove it by pushing start on this timer, I would appreciate it. And we're off. Max, you've made lots of games, you've been creative director for quite some time at Ubisoft. Can you share, I guess, what may be the most rewarding experience for you? Every, I'm not, I'm not picking uh, my favorite children, uh, my favorite child, that's for sure. I think every game, every game I've made that was, you know, a, a great learning experience. Vegas, Rainbow Six Vegas was my first game as creative director. So that's got definitely a special place in my heart. Then, you know, worked one year on AC, we launched AC, that's it's AC, right? That was crazy, the team, the team was great. Then Conviction, Conviction was a, an amazing project two-year project the team the team there was great also after that we moved to Toronto yeah started the studio you joined we made blacklist that was like a whole I'm super super proud of that and then working on on, on the Far Cry brand has been has been great also so yeah I'm not I'm not they're all my favorite all right then let me get an opinion from you what would you say makes great game design that's a that's a big question mm -hmm. I think I think great game design is when you get fully immersed in a game and you forget that you're playing a game and you're just in the zone. I think that's when you know that you've got great game design. All right, I like it. Are you able to play games as a gamer or are you always digesting them, processing them through the lens of a designer? I think, I think as, as, a, as a designer, you're always analyzing. I think you're always looking at why, how do things work, you're deconstructing them, trying to understand how they work, why they work that way, why the people that made those, those design decisions, you know, took those decisions. And I think it's not just for games, it's, it's for everything. If you're a designer, you're analyzing everything, doors, cars, phones, cameras, everything. With that said, are you able to play games, your games that you've made, or once you're done, do you have to wash your hands? It's very difficult, especially at the end of a project, a lot of like my, my, my role requires me to play a lot of the game at the end. 
and and you know give a lot of notes and feedback to the team. So once once the game's out, I'm not. I don't want to play. I don't want to see it anymore. You're allowed to take one game with you as we evacuate Earth and move to Mars as an entire population. It can be played on any platform. What yeah. game is it? It's either Destiny or World of Warcraft. Okay. Yeah. Why? I, well, I want to. I want to bring a game that I can play with my friends. Okay. For sure. So I want a co-op aspect, and I want a game that's gonna. You know, if we're stuck on Mars and we're eating potatoes, we're going to have a lot of free time, I guess. <laughs> so I want a game that is going to allow me to play for a long time. Just you and Matt Damon. <sighs> I love Matt Damon. <laughs> All right, so uh, some quick preferences for you then. Um, and I think you may have answered it already, but for the record, single player, couch co-op, or online multiplayer? Co-op. Everything's better with friends. Agreed. Conviction for the win. Um, all right. Um, open world or narrative driven? Yeah, both. Both, okay. Both for sure. I mean, I, open world, of course, mm -hmm. for sure, for sure, open world. Um, but, 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 I think you can still have great stories and great characters in, in an open world game. So I don't think they're exclusive. So what is it about open world that speaks to you? I think freedom. I think. I think. Look, I think in, in 30 years we're gonna have invented the holodeck, and it's gonna be the ultimate game. All right. So between now and then. I'll take open world games. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Chocolate. Cho without a doubt. Well, I mean, vanilla's growing on me as I get older, but but I, I think if I you're you're asking or so I'll I won't be uh, <laughs> difficult and I'll say chocolate. Greatest token of appreciation you've had from a fan for one of the games you worked on? I, I, I think it's when it's when they share their stories. I think it's when they, you know, they recognize you or you start talking with a fan, and they just have this emotional connection with a game you've made, and they're just sharing a story or, or multiple stories. How, you know, like, oh, my brother lives in in this other, you know, country on this other continent, but you know, we, we play your your game every night or every second night or we have a day. Like those little stories of 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 of, of, of people with with the game, I think, are, are the best. Most underrated, most underrated aspect of game development. I think I think it's that it's 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 way more complicated than it looks. I think we we often forget, even us when we're making a game. Sometimes we're like, why isn't this working? Like what what you know? And it's 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 hard. It's hard. It's it's so like it's such a, a multi-craft uh, art form. You know, like uh, level design, art, animation, programming, game design, inter like. It, so when I think once you have a good game. Like it's 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 magic, right? Everything's connecting together, and it's it's. I think we we even us as as the game developers, we forget about it sometimes. That's all the time we have, Max. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zach. Once again, big thanks to Max. If you've got questions for future guests or the show, the Blend at Ubisoft.com or on Twitter at the Blend Ubi. Now I know you do a great job of keeping up to speed with everything Ubisoft, but just in case something slipped by your radar, this is things you may have missed. The Watch Dogs community team of Chase and Hanny is responsible for this deep dive video series called Remote Access. And in this second episode, we hear from the Watch Dogs 2 dev team, talking about their portrayal of hacking and hacker culture, as well as fun applications in game and freedom of play. Over the last little bit, we also got to take in cosplay guides for both Wrench and Sitara, official colorways, close-ups, and the all-important 360 turnarounds. Cosplayers don't miss these. Meanwhile, if you're looking for design tips of a different flavor, the For Honor community team of Emil and Eric released their second cosplay guide. This one for the samurai, Kensei. As you know, the time around E3 is a busy beast and stuff is still sprinkling out. Emma and Arnaud, the community team behind Ghost Recon Wildlands, recently shared the masterclass from Ubisoft Lounge, which delves into player freedom, customization, and the philosophies about the game world. And finally, a really cool opportunity for the Just Dance star players, as Moose, their community developer, invited the group to move with a professional choreographer. Yeah, just showing that anyone can dance, which uh, I'm a good plug. That's what Just Dance is all about as well. Yeah. So, absolutely. so that's just a glimpse of what we have been up to for the last little bit. What did you see that you liked? What are you looking forward to seeing more of? Uh, speaking of which, the big question is back. As we ask Max, you're headed to Mars. You can only bring one game. Which game would it be? and why. I'll reveal my response in the next episode. Looking forward to seeing what you have to say. If you like the show, give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe as well. Connect with us on Twitter because this only gets better if we build together. Much love. Wow!